saints are supposed to be a certain way, but why do they have to be that way? Isn't there another way to be a saint? There's um, 30, 30 of them in, in the exhibition. They all have different ways of being saintly. Early on when I started picking the ice cream spoons up from the sidewalk um, and putting them in my pocket, I noticed that they were in the form of, or the schematic configuration of a woman. And then they became, for me, I started thinking of them. I didn't reason this out. I just started thinking of them as the saints, and female saints, I guess. And uh, if I found one, I felt that I was lucky and would have protection. This was part of me felt that way. And the other part of me was more skeptical, but was willing to put my skeptical feelings on hold. And I enjoyed being able to be uh, childlike in that way and ridiculous. So this was going on, and one day when I was teaching, I went to the library between classes, and I was looking on the shelf where there were Gertrude Stein books, and I saw four saints and three acts on the shelf. Um, and I didn't know about this work. It's a libretto for an opera. And I thought, wow, I'll read it. And I suppose Gertrude Stein's writing gave me a way to think, or to a way to use that word that wasn't off-putting. She gave me permission. I don't know what a saint is. I do not come from a religious background in any way at all. And how dare I use the word saint? But she did, and she gave me permission. <laughs> and it was also, there was a truth to it because the word had come up naturally inside of me. The fact that she doesn't seem to be willing to conform to conventional form. And uh, there's something of a childlike zeal about the work that she does. And I feel not a stranger to that way of proceeding. And I feel that her writing is my friend in that way. I think also with the words she chooses, um, I think she's really trusting her impulses. And that's not to say that they're one shots or she doesn't refine them or anything like that. But there's something about the directness of the language that she has to she has to have trusted that initial impulse that said use this word use it five times i love the absurdity of it i love the sense nonsense of it i also love that her writing is not ingratiating. She doesn't need you to get it. I don't think that, for me, the art process is um, going anywhere if there's not an element of resistance. It seems a necessary element.
I don't want to make those stitches mindlessly, and the difficulty uh, enables me to think, to be there for every stitch. Uh, I, I am thinking drawing, I am thinking mark making, and I want to be present for every, everything that happens. One of the things I find um, challenging about working with felt, and one of the ways it resists me, is that even if I cut two pieces of felt exactly the same that I'll sew together, when I'm sewing the seam, one side will stretch, and when I finish the seam, there'll be a little bit left over and I refuse to trim it to make them right. However, the fact that they're not, quote, right presents a formal challenge. How do I make it right? So how do I make a uh, wrong right? How do I transform it? I get very involved in that. If I sew, many seams and then connect them together to make a form, the felt torques. And so uh, it leans, you know, and that presents another challenge because I don't try to fix that either, but I try to work with it so that it feels right. Right's not the right word. Resolved as a form. I'm able to get somewhere um, that I didn't expect in my work when I'm both going against myself and with myself. I like things not not fitting together too well. I like the tension of trying to put things together that don't belong together. I like colliding worlds. I mean, I really like that a lot. I like being on the edge of the diving board that way because when I do solve it, I ha that's a wonderful feeling. That's like great feeling.